All right, with the latest news coming out of China that DeepSeek AI created a super cheap and smart new model that's way better than all the American models, now feels like a pretty good time to take a look at the computer science job market in the United States. In my last video, I talked about whether or not college was a scam and how to determine if college was a good value proposition for you. And historically, as a degree, computer science has been just about as good of a value proposition that you can get out of college. With a bachelor's degree in CS, you could land a job doing really cool work for just about as high of a starting salary as you're going to find, with incredible salary growth potential in your career. This might have changed, and it's no secret that the computer science job market is pretty awful right now, with graduates seemingly destined for the unemployment line. At least, if you ask TikTok. But in all seriousness, it is really hard out there right now. Every job application seemingly has hundreds or thousands of applicants, and it seems like there's less and less positions on job boards. Job fairs are barren wastelands, and internships are nowhere to be found. There are a bunch of narratives going around right now that are trying to explain what's going on with the computer science job market, and some of them have merit and some of them don't, but today I wanted to go over them and try to explain why the job market is so bad right now. And at the end, I'll give you my opinion on if the market is actually cooked or if it's going to get better in the future. Starting off with AI. This is the hottest narrative right now. Uh, that's the idea that AI is replacing entry-level engineers and reducing the number of job openings. Another narrative is that computer science is oversaturated thanks to the public perception of the major changing for the better. Seems like every day I open TikTok and someone's blaming Frank New for telling people to go study CS so they can get rich. Or all of those day in the life TikToks from the pandemic showing people getting paid a million dollar salary to play table tennis in the office. Going the other direction, H-1B visas were in the news recently as a hot topic of discussion. Are a bunch of foreign workers coming in and taking those jobs? In a similar vein, outsourcing is making a storming comeback post-COVID. We'll talk about all of that along with the last, most boring narrative, and that is monetary policy and the Federal Reserve's Fed fund rate. So take a seat, get comfortable, and grab a beverage if you want. But first, a bit about me. I have a bachelor's degree in computer science. Also, for the purposes of this video, I'm going to be using the terms computer science and software engineering as catch-alls for this massive umbrella of fields. To cover things like web development, network or hardware engineering, cybersecurity, data engineering, database administration, you know, any field that you can feasibly get into with a computer science degree. So starting off with AI. Despite what the headlines are telling you and what people outside the industry keep saying, AI has not taken any software engineering jobs, at least not on a scale of any consequence. And it's probably not going to for the foreseeable future. When you think of computer science, I'm sure you picture coding. And while yes, coding is a really important element of software engineering, it's only one piece of the puzzle. Engineers are also responsible for system design, product support and monitoring, meeting with other teams, engineers, product managers, and higher ups, completing code reviews and integrations, and so many other things. Meanwhile, what is AI really good at? As of right now, you know, January 2000, 2025, AI is actually pretty good at things like writing boilerplate code, writing test cases, and helping you with things like code syntax or basic troubleshooting. I'm sure you've seen all those use cases of people going on to chat GPT and creating a rudimentary website. Stuff like that is genuinely incredible. However, it is basic, at least compared to the business processes that a lot of these companies are doing. And when you go above a basic single system level, AI really can't do any of those things that I mentioned reliably, if at all, and companies know this. So far, it hasn't been able to pick up on the nuance and complexity of system design. It hasn't been reliable in supporting production code and resolving issues as they come up. It can't really take external feedback from third parties and reliably implement it. And overall, it really can't interface with the current systems in order to automate these tasks or to do them at all. At a basic level, like I said, it's extremely impressive and it's improving. It's getting better every single day. But it's not at the level of replacing engineers yet, even junior level engineers. And there's no promise that it's going to get there in the next few years, five years, 10 years, if at all. Overall, my gauge on market sentiment is that the market sees AI as not a replacement for engineers, but as a tool that will make engineers more efficient. It may automate away some of the code that junior engineers are writing, but those jobs will evolve just as a pilot's job evolved after the adoption of autopilot, for example. There's a ton to talk about with AI though, and it's an awesome subject to keep discussing, so I might make another video in the future going further into detail on it. But overall, for our purposes today, AI has not replaced very many engineers, if at all, and it has not destroyed the CS job market. And it's not going to for a while longer, if ever. 
However, this is just my opinion. There's a lot of predicting the future going on here, and I could be completely wrong, so I'd love to hear what you think. Next up is oversaturation. Are there too many entry-level computer scientists for the job market? And I'm actually going to say yes, but with a big asterisk. All saturation really is, is how many prospective employees there are compared to the number of jobs available. At the moment, there are a ton of prospective employees and comparatively, not a lot of available jobs. So technically, yes, the market is oversaturated. By all metrics, the number of entry-level CS degree holders and people in the CS field in general is continuing to grow. That is to say, the total number of degree holders is increasing and the rate of increase is also increasing. However, there's really no data to suggest that we saw a historic spike in the number of people in CS after COVID. For sure, the rate is increasing, but not enough to crash the job market. It's not super clear, but the data that we do have suggests that since 2015, the number of people graduating with a degree in computer science has been increasing by about 10% each year. And that might sound like a lot, but you have to remember, prior to about 2022, there was always a massive shortage of engineers. Like, I'm talking hundreds of thousands of unfilled roles. And even with the increasing number of computer science graduates every year, there's still not enough to fill that gap. So to bring it all the way back, you have to remember that there are two sides to that original equation. Remember, the number of job seekers versus the number of available jobs. Looking at job market data, which is way more reliable, shows us that job growth has not kept up with previous trends prior to about 2022. In fact, not only are companies hiring less, but we're seeing a lot more layoffs than we used to, again, compared to the 2010s. And one thing that illustrates this really clearly is the hiring rate. One of my favorite content creators out there right now is a person called Keds Economist on TikTok. She's a PhD economist and she just made a brilliant video talking about the unemployment rate versus the hiring rate. She goes on to talk about how unemployment rate was pretty closely tied to hiring rate in previous years, but recently they've split and unemployment has remained pretty low, but hiring rate has plummeted since 2022. And this is extremely important as software engineering is a major job market and it absolutely is reflected in these numbers. All of this is to say there are just not that many jobs getting filled right now. An analogy is that the ocean is drying up and the remaining water now feels way more congested uh, to the fish than it used to. But the fish are catching the blame when in reality there's just less water, there's less space for all of the fish that were there previously. I don't know, that probably doesn't make any sense, but I hope you get the picture. So if it's not AI and it's not oversaturation, maybe it's H-1B visas or outsourcing. Like I said, H-1Bs have come up a lot on the political stage recently. And while I'm not going to get into that specifically, I will shed a bit of light on what that program does. Very, very, very simplified. It lets educated and highly skilled non-American citizens come to the United States and work for an American company. And a ton of those high skill, high education H-1B recipients are engineers. Overall, it's really hard to say whether or not H-1B visas are having an outsized impact on the computer science job market because the data is just not that readily available on how many visa holders there are and what fields they're in. Like, I'm pretty sure there's a lot of individual data out there, but not as much in aggregate. However, we do know that the number of visas given per year is capped and it's locked to 65,000 per year with an additional 20,000 available for advanced degree holders. And it's been that way since 2004. And that is also for any field, not just software engineering. And that may sound like a lot, but the United States job market is massive. There are thousands of companies, and many of them employ more than 65,000 white-collar workers on their own. And these visas represent workers of all experience levels, not just entry level. So I don't think that this program is responsible for the current state of the market. Or rather, it would be a huge stretch to put the majority of the blame on the H-1B program. Now, outsourcing, on the other hand, is a different story. Outsourcing really is nothing new. Companies have been closing their factories and moving to other countries since the 70s with software engineering outsourcing going back to the dot-com bubble. However, at least in computer science, outsourcing really seems to pick up during periods of economic uncertainty. Now, this was before my time, but outsourcing was apparently pretty widespread around the turn of the century, during the Great Recession, and now since about 2022. And when you think about it, when those companies are really focused on keeping things running, staying profitable, etc., and not as much on innovation and growth, 
as many companies are now and is often the case during those uncertain periods, they're incentivized to get rid of American labor, which is really, really costly, in favor of cheaper labor elsewhere in the world. And in computer science, there is a lot of cheap labor available in places like India, the Philippines, Malaysia, Vietnam, you know, South and Southeast Asia. And again, it's super, super hard to track this stuff. There's not a lot of good data on this, but based on anecdotes, a lot of these jobs that are getting affected by outsourcing are those entry level jobs, meaning that a ton of entry level coders are affected by outsourcing. But I think that outsourcing is just a symptom. Companies are always trying to save money, but this need to be extra tight and extra cheap is not how it is all the time. I think it's extra tight right now because the federal funds rate is high as the Fed is trying to curb inflation. I'm not gonna get into the politics and everything behind that right now because we'd be here all day and I am the furthest thing from an expert. But what you need to know at a high level, when the Fed funds rate is high, it's harder for investors to borrow money making investors' funds harder to come by for companies. When that happens, companies aren't able to focus as much on growth or innovation or new products, and instead they need to maximize what they currently have for the most part. This means that hiring slows down and salaries stop growing as quickly, and this has a cascading effect across the entire market. Investors, workers, companies, everyone got really used to cheap money before the pandemic and right after it. People are expecting high growth and high salaries because that's what they're used to. That's where we came from. But that is just not the economic case right now. Overall, I think that this is the primary cause for the bad job market as it's really caused all of these other factors to compound. All right, that was a lot. Thank you so much for sticking with me. Back to the CS job market as a whole. Do I think it's cooked? Maybe surprisingly, I'm going to say no, that it is not cooked. One important thing to remember through this whole thing is that CS isn't the only white collar job market that's struggling. In fact, basically every other white collar profession besides accounting is struggling just as much, if not more, than computer science. And that's all for the same reasons that I just previously discussed. I can't speak as much for the blue collar job market, but it seems like some of those fields are also not doing super well, but that's based on anecdotes and other anecdotes suggest that the blue collar job market is doing very well. The biggest thing, like I said, is that hiring rate discussed by Ked's Economist. I'll try to link her video in the description and I'd highly recommend checking it out. It goes into the whole job market and it shows that it is just not in good shape right now, despite what unemployment metrics are saying. I'd personally go as far to say that it's in terrible shape, but that's just me. For computer science specifically, I think that the future is bright. Like I said in that AI section, opportunities are going to change and evolve, but I think that it's going to be an extremely hot market in the future. I think opportunities are just going to become more and more plentiful as companies are going to need more engineers to implement AI into their business. And that's not to say anything about the general continuation of technology getting better and becoming more widespread around the world. The opportunities are going to be massive. So no, I think that the CS job market is not cooked. I think it's just down like the rest of the white collar job market. It's tough right now, but it's not going to stay tough forever. If you're graduating soon or if you're in the job market right now, best of luck to you. It is really tough out there, but you're going to reach the other side of this. Trust yourself and stay the course. Thank you all so much for watching and please consider subscribing if you found this video interesting. Kill confirmed.